So what we're going to discuss today are fascial expansions of the temporomandibular joint and the surrounding area. This is a really interesting thing because what we're doing is we're combining a lot of the research from the fascial community, which is kind of the leading edge of what's going on in the musculoskeletal world today, with traditional Chinese medicine, specifically acupuncture points, but applying pressure to those points. But before we get into the actual details of performing some, you know, different treatment aspects of it, let's actually get into some of these expansions. So let's go over specific fascial planes. But in general terms, I just want to make a comment that when we have restrictions in the fascia or the connective tissue. These can be addressed by multiple techniques. Fascia is often defined as one interconnecting tensional network that adapts its fibers, arrangements, and density according to local tensional demands. What that means is that if I have a restriction at one point down here, there are such strong interconnections that it's going to influence multiple layers of tissue. It could affect behind the eyes, the ear, the jaw. And this time we're going to focus directly around the temporomandibular joint for temporomandibular dysfunction or TMD. Now, there are three fascial planes I want to talk about. One is what we refer to as the epicranial fascia. Now, the epicranial fascia serves as a connection between the occipitalis and the frontalis muscle. So we're talking about the base of the skull here and all the way up to the front. It is connected, so whatever happens here is going to greatly influence the entire area. Now, this particular type of fascia, the epicranial fascia, extends continuously to the temporal fascia, so the temporal muscle. As a matter of fact, it envelopes the entire temporalis muscle. Toward the front of the epicranial fascia, it actually transitions into another fascia called tenon's fascia. Now, tenon's fascia constitutes a protective sheath around the eye or the upper eyelid here. So a lot of times when people have tension headaches, or they have other problems, they'll notice that whatever is going on here, the tension here will manifest in pain behind the eye. Now, another really important area in terms of fascia is referred to as the pterygoid fascia. Now, the pterygoid fascia encompasses the medial and lateral pterygoid muscles and attaches to the temporomandibular joint capsule. So this is a really important structure. A section of the upper head of the uh, lateral pterygoid muscle directly inserts into the anterior medial region of the articular des disc at the temporomandibular joint. As a result, the lateral pterygoid muscle and its associated fascia can directly impact the articular disc, its position and movement. So we often talk about how important the lateral pterygoid muscle is, but the fascia itself and that other fascia connects into multiple areas. So this is an interconnected plane. We don't, we're talking about three different layers, but in reality, it's one tensional network. So now what we need to talk about is the correlation between these fascial planes and acupuncture points. It's really interesting because modern research has revealed that acupuncture points often correspond to areas where there is a high density of neurological receptors, actually blood vessels, lymphatic vessels, and even there's an increased level of electrical conductivity in the area. What this basically says is that if we can stimulate acupuncture points, it'll have a physiological effect in the local area, but throughout the entire chain here. Not only that, but research is showing it'll increase endorphins, increase neurotransmitters, and many substances that actually help to relieve pain. Now, you say, okay, so you put a needle in an area, how does that actually work? Well, we have high levels of this neurological input. But if I was an acupuncturist, I would actually insert a needle, and then I would actually stimulate that. So they're not just inserted, they're rotated, they're pulled back and forth, until the acupuncturist feels what we refer to as a tug response. When performing acupressure, same thing, we'd get on an area where there might be a acupuncture point, and we don't just get on there and slowly work around here, we actually need to get in and actually move it around quite a bit. You doing okay there, Mickey? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you wanna get in and you actually want to work the area around the in entire surrounding area, and you also, you know, just think of it as if there was a needle in there in some ways, we may want to use different procedures where we roll the tissue, where we actually get in and do a little bit of cross-friction massage. If we feel an, an area that may be 
a little thicker, get all that area and actually work it around. Now, I want to get on to very specific acupuncture points, which I think will be a great adjunct to the hands-on fascial work that we do. So the first point I want to discuss is what we call stomach six. It's located at the prominence of the masseter muscle, one finger width anterior and superior to the angle of the mandible. So that's the angle of the mandible. So we're going to go right here. Feel that right there, Mickey? Mm-hmm. Okay. Is that tender? Yep. A little bit there. <laughs> okay. It's interesting in Chinese medicine because they'd use this point for facial paralysis, trigeminalgia, toothaches, and our main focus here, which they definitely use it for, is temporomandibular joint disorders. Okay, so we'd want to stay on this point and all the points for, you know, it could be about a minute, let's say, 30 seconds to a minute. We might feel the area start to loosen, but as I said, you want to get in there and really work the area around. You feeling that there? Mm -hmm. Do you feel it more when I just rub it or actually get in there and kind of knead the area? Knead the area for yeah? sure. Okay. So let's just move up to another one, which is just forward from here. Now, this is stomach seven. This is anterior to the ear in the depression between the zygomatic arch and the mandibular arch. Now, they also use this for facial paralysis, TMJ disorders, toothache. But this is an interesting one too, because in traditional Chinese medicine, they would also use this for tinnitus. Is that one as sore as the other one, or is this one still pretty sore? It's not as sore as the other one. Okay. And again, I uh, want your feedback here. Do you feel it more when I get in there like that? Way more, yeah. Way more. Yeah. So if I was just to go in and do that. Not as much. Not as much. So realize that when I'm getting on these areas, I'm actually tapping in to the entire fascial expansion between the temporalis muscle, occipital frontalis, and right up near the front around the eye here. So I actually can use these points because there's such a high density of neurological receptors. So for the next point we're going to use is actually small intestine eight, and we're down on the medial side of the elbow here. And you may be saying, how can I possibly be treating fascial expansions around the jaw when it comes to actually getting on the elbow? Well, we're starting to get into the fact that there's really thick, increased neurological receptors in this area. And one area definitely will affect the entire body. So, and after hundreds and hundreds of years of treatment in traditional Chinese medicine, they know this is actually a very effective way to actually address these problems. So let's get on to small intestine eight. Location here on the medial aspect of the elbow in the depression between the olecranon process of the ulna and the medial epicondyle of the humerus. So you might say, okay, what sort of things do we actually end up treating here? A lot of things, if you actually look up small intestine eight, you're going to see that it does treat a lot of localized areas here. But this is also over top of the common flexor tendon. Is that pretty sore in there, maybe? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to get in here and I'm actually going to just, I, I can stimulate it this way. Do you feel that very much? Yeah. Okay. What about when I actually get in here and I go like this, though? So much more. <laughs> yeah, you feel that a lot more, don't you? Yeah. So when we're actually working on some of these areas, we're actually combining uh, treatments. And if I was just to take your arm and actually go through and you know get in like that, you're gonna feel a lot. So this is actually a way that we could also address areas in terms of acupressure, not just getting into the area, but tugging, turning, twisting, and getting in and working on that. Again, for about 30 seconds to a minute. You okay? Oh, yeah, that's great. <laughs> oh, just wonderful. <laughs> Thanks for asking. So the next point we're gonna go over is large intestine four or hoku, I can actually pronounce this one. <laughs> the other ones, if I tried to pronounce it in Mandarin, uh, I'd be butchering the name. So in terms of location, we're talking about the dorsal aspect of the hand between the first and second metacarpal bones, approximately at the point of the second metacarpal bone. So let's just get up to about right here. Feeling that there, Mickey? Mm -hmm. Okay. So if I just go in and I just kind of stimulate this point, I don't think you feel too much in there. No. But if I take my thumb, and kind of get between the trough in there, kind of move it around. Yeah. You feel that quite a bit. A lot more. Okay. So it's interesting because in terms of this point, this is considered to be a, uh, a pretty important point in acupuncture. They use this for headaches, toothaches, facial pain, neck pain, and various conditions related to the face and the head. So in terms of some of the literature and research on traditional Chinese medicine, this one fits right into dealing with a lot of the fascial expansions or the fascial planes that were uh, pointed out in the head here. 
You know, okay? Mm -hmm. And again, we'll get in there. We'll do that for well, 30 seconds to a minute, but, you know, fairly aggressively communicating with the patient, not creating too, too, too much tension, but uh, enough that we actually get a desired result. Mm -hmm. There is one other point I would like to mention about large intestine four or Hoku. This particular point has a contraindication which is extremely important, and that is to avoid this point during pregnancy. They actually use this with other points to actually induce labor in Chinese medicine. So if you are pregnant and your patient is pregnant, do not use this point. So there's one more acupuncture point that I want to talk about, and this one you can stimulate both sides at the same time. And this is GB20. The location is on the posterior aspect of the neck below the occipital bone. In the depression between the upper portion of the sternocleidomastoid muscle and trapezius muscles. Okay, let's get in there. How's that feeling right there? Oh, Annie? it's nice. Yeah. Not nearly as painful as the other ones? No, it's delightful. So as you see, I'm stimulating both sides at the same time, which brings up a very important point. It's just because you have a problem in the jaw on one side, it would pay for you to do some of these fa this fascial work on both sides. It isn't as necessary as some of the myofascial release work that we show, but it still will be of great benefit. Doing okay there? Mm -hmm. Okay, what I know is I do that, or I get in like this. Which do you feel more? This one. This one? Oh, yeah. Okay. You can feel that quite a bit more, can't a you? A lot more. Yeah. Good. So again, about 30 seconds to a minute, combining all these different points and working around the entire fascial expansion. If you feel an area of tension, so if we're on the head and you feel like there's a lot of tension throughout the entire cranium here, get on that. Some of the procedures we use actually use hair pulling or just tension on an area. These are all great techniques. And also getting in and doing some of the direct myofascial release of the jaw, it's also gonna help you to release some of the areas around the temporomandibular joint. This is really, really exciting work and that we can get results for patients usually within a relatively short period of time.